Hello everyone, I am Manali Reshramwala, Assistant Professor from LG Institute of Physiotherapy. Today I am going to discuss about physiotherapy management following all the lung surgeries. It is a part of syllabus for final year physiotherapy students of Gujarat University and the subject is physiotherapy in cardiopulmonary conditions. Let's see the types of lung surgeries which are known as pneumonectomy, lobectomy, segmentectomy, wedge resection, thoracoplasty and operations on the pleura. According to the indications of surgery, this, any of these type of surgeries are being done on the lungs. The incisions made on thorax for any kind of lung surgeries are collectively known as thoracotomy. Most common incisions are used in lung surgeries are enterolateral or posterolateral thoracotomy, sometimes median sternotomy also. So let's see what all the things which we can include postoperatively in physiotherapy. We have to first take postoperative physiotherapy assessment, then aims of physiotherapy and lastly according to the aims or goals we have set, we will be setting the management for physiotherapy. So let's see first postoperative physiotherapy assessment. Whenever we uh, see the patient postoperatively, we will be looking him inside an ICU. So we need to check for all these things. First of all is which type of operation is being done. Then incision, which type of incision is being done gives you idea about which type of muscles or which all are the muscles have been cut during that operation. So we have to plan our physiotherapy management according to it. Then we'll be seeing for chest radiograph, temperature, pulse rate. We also need to find out the deficit between apex and radial pulse. Because in cases like pneumonectomy and lobectomy, if mediastinum gets shifted to any of the side, we may get the pulse deficit. As well as these may indicate some of the issues with the patient. Next is respiratory rate and blood pressure. If we find deficit between apex and radial pulse, we might suspect for atrial fibrillation occurring to the patient. So we have to guide that patient to another medical officer. Next is drug chart. We have to see for analgesia and an inhalations given to the patient. If uh, uh, there, are, there is thick uh, secretions present in the sound lung or sound area of the lung, then benzoin tincture inhalations uh, are being given to the patient. Next is fluid chart. Amount of fluid intake and output should be uh, checked. And last is oxygen therapy, whether patient is being given oxygen therapy or not and through which mode it is being given. Lastly, we have to check for the drains, number of drains especially. In a case of uh, like lobectomy, there will be two drains. One is from pleural cavity and one is from the area from where uh, the lobe has been removed. So that number of drains should be known, noticed and uh, we need to notice the amount of drainage in there, whether or not there is an air leak, whether or uh, not there is a use of suction pump. Uh, if off suction, whether or not the drain is swinging or not, we need to check for patency of it. So here was the post-operative physiotherapy assessment. Now let's see the aims of physiotherapy management followed, followed by uh, post-operation. So we have the aims of first of all is to clear secretion from the remaining lung, re retain full expansion of the remaining lung tissue. We need to prevent pulmonary circulatory complications like deep vein thrombosis, prevention of wound complications, regain arm and spinal movements, maintain good posture which usually happens after surgery because of pain at the suture site. Patient may have habit of bending on that side and patient may get scoliosis. So we have to prevent that uh, and we have to maintain good posture. And lastly is to restore exercise tolerance of the patient. So let's see the post-operative regime. Here we are going to discuss a, a regime of a physio uh, physiotherapy management for a patient undergone any thoracotomy. So on the day of operation, after given analgesia, we may find the patient in ICU only, where he must be given oxygen therapy for first few hours. We will find the patient in such position like half lying or side lying with the pillows arranged behind the neck back and both forearms on, on the pillow or lap or 
If patient has been done pneumonectomy, we may find patient in high side lying on the side of operation to prevent bronchopleural fistula, which is the commonest complication after pneumonectomy. We need to take care of the bronchial stump after being removal of any of the side of the lung. Uh, so uh, we may find the patient in such position. We may find the patient in side lying position with the security of the drainage tube like this way on the pillow and we must take care of this drainage tube as these drainage bottles should never be uh, uplifted beyond the patient level otherwise there will, will be uh, uh, the drainage will may go on the another side which may create infection inside it. We also need to uh, give patient expansion breathing exercise for all the areas of the lung and huffing with the support to the wound. So uh, we have in previous uh, uh, video of pneumonectomy, we have already discussed that in preoperatively we are going to make the patient to do exercises as well as we are going to teach him huffing techniques. So it will be easier for patient to cooperate with us postoperatively. So if we have already made the patient preoperatively, these things becomes quite easier to make patient cooperation. We have to start with foot and ankle exercises on the same day of operation to prevent deep vein thrombosis. The physiotherapist should support the operation side firmly but gently, taking care not to press directly on the incision or drainage tubes. This way patient is allowed to do huffing. Cuffing initially is not being advised. It may create high intrathoracic and intra-abdominal pressure which may lead to uh, difficulty as well as pain uh, uh, at the site of suture. So uh, with the support of physiotherapist patient will be doing huffing techniques. On the day one post-operatively treatment should be given three to four times as necessary. Analgesia and inhalation therapy should be ensured. In half lying position, we can give patients segmental expansion exercises. We can also add inspiratory holding, which will improve the oxygen level. We can also add shaking or vibration as required on the sound side. Huffing and expectoration with the wound support by physiotherapy should also be uh, performed. In case of lobectomy, partial drainage can also be given to the sound side by elevating the foot end of the bed, but it should not be given in a case of pneumonectomy because of again a danger of bronchopleural fistula to occur. Self-dependency. We also need to teach the patient doing huffing with a self-support to the suture site. It should be done by the end of first day post-operatively. We can also ask the patient to use rope ladder to uh, have some mobility on the bed uh, so he, he does not feel much of dependency. Postural awareness and correction. As I said, because of uh, thoracotomy on any of the side, patient may get uh, uh, pain and because of pain, he has tendency to lean on that side which may cause uh, scoliosis. So from the day one only we are going to make the patient aware about his posture. We have to make his correct uh, posture every time wherever we see there is some dif differences. So even patient is in half lying, we have to make sure that patients both the shoulder position should be in a equal level. Uh, then uh, weight should be taken equally on the both the buttocks from the day one. Gradually patient will be having habit of that and he may not get uh, deformed posture. Next exercise of arm on the operated side as the muscles being cut especially latissimus dorsi and other muscles of the arm. So we have to make the patient to do assisted arm elevation on the same day or next day of the operation only. To prevent uh, uh, contracture on that muscle we have to do these assisted exercises up to the limit of the pain. So will be doing assisted arm elevation, assisted arm movement to uh, touch the back of the neck and opposite shoulder should be performed gently. Next leg exercises, foot and ankle movement should be performed actively. Then quadriceps contraction that is uh, isometric quadriceps exercises. Then alternate hip and knee bending and stretching on the bed should be performed in half lying position. In afternoon, patient is allowed to sit down, sit on out at the bed at the edge of the bed. 
we have to ensure the safety of drainage tube along with it next day that is the day 2 post operatively treatment is continued as a day 1 plus we have to add self support huffing and more of the number of the time and exercise in sitting like uh, we can ask the patient to do trunk exercises in the sitting like we keeping the hands on the shoulder and trunk bending side to side or trunk turning uh, on this uh, with the same position gentle stretching of the trunk and abdominal contraction in crook lying position next is we can ask the patient to do arm exercises with auto assisted technique in full range with uh, and if patient is uh, feeling pain he can limit the range Elevation should be practiced every hourly to prevent any kind of contracture in the muscles. Bilateral breathing should in the sitting position should also be encouraged. We have to ask the patient to avoid sit sitting cross leg to prevent deep vein thrombosis as there may be compression at the popliteal artery and vein. So uh, that should be avoided. We should also encourage the patient to have a short walk with a drainage trolley around the bed uh, with the help of physiotherapist on the day three post-operatively treatment should be performed twice a day that means what we were doing for three to four times a day we'll be doing now twice a day removal of drainage tube usually occurs by the day of and three breathing and huffing should be continued trunk exercise arm exercise should also be continued walking should be extended Encourage the patient to dress up normal clothing by himself so that he gets some dependency, uh, get away from the dependency and we have to ask the patient to join for group therapy which will improve his psychological and, uh, and uh, physiological uh, benefits. Last is day 4, post operative to discharge. That means up to discharge, patient have to follow the same guidelines. So we have to ask the patient to continue with the group therapy, get dressed, walking further, go up and down stairs to encourage uh, by the uh, end of the seventh day. Bilateral breathing, arm, leg, trunk exercises is essential. Stitches usually are taken out by seven to 10 days and discharge is usually done after 10 to 15 days modifications some of the modifications are required if the same thing which we were discussing does not go and patient may develop some of the complications if patient is having hypoventilation in any of the area we can give incentive spirometry or segmental breathing exercises to that area then retain secretions in that case we can give humidification oxygen therapy and postural drainage laryngeal nerve palsy which is one of the unavoidable complication of pneumonectomy in which we can make the patient to do breathing exercises, huffing. We can also give IPPB that is intermittent positive pressure breathing with low pressure which may improve vocal cord movement and uh, we can get rid of the issues. Then uh, that can also help to have effective coughing for further. If there is a phrenic nerve palsy which is again on one of the uh, complication from pneumonectomy which may cause paralysis of the diaphragm in that case also we can give IPPB. Next is paradoxical breathing which may be a complication of thoracoplasty. We can use strapping, cotton wool pad support, forward lean position for coughing. Everything can help to reduce some of the paradoxical breathing. Long term management, 3 monthly checkup for 1 year and 6 monthly for next year. So for 2 years consecutively patient need to come for regular follow-up and checkup. Check for lung expansion, exercise tolerance, posture, trunk and shoulder mobility, scar tissue mobility, etc. And according to it, plan a treatment. We have to set a home exercise program for patient or we have to ask the patient to join for pulmonary rehabilitation in outpatient rehab team. Exercise should be continued more than two hours years in pneumonectomy. So here are the references. Thank you.